Attention, this is for you, John from Arkansas. Unbeknownst to John, I did plant some potatoes this year. I planted them in this weed-infested garden. And if you look way back there, you can see John the Scarecrow there in the weeds. This was my secret plan all along to trick John from Arkansas. And boy, did I trick him. Read him and weep, John. As you can see, this crop is a lot more than yours. Take a look at those beauties. And so, John, because of my magnificent garden this year, I, Buzz1151, do hereby declare myself the 2018 Potato King four times in a row. And don't you forget it. All right. You ask for it, boy. You're going to get it. I'd like to welcome everybody to the final edition of this 1948 Holocrafters TV. Thank God! As far as I'm concerned, I'm done replacing components under here. Most of the stuff pretty much checks okay, so I think I'm just wasting my money. Uh, most of these resistors here, these old ones, they're still good. So I'm not going to change anymore. I'll leave that to the next person who gets this. I added a current limiter, CL90, up here. Good. Just to protect the tubes a little bit. Now, I haven't worked on this for a couple months, and it's been laying on the floor. And the last time I picked this up and put it on the bench, I noticed something weird. Oh, good grief. Now, you see all these buttons here. These push buttons are for the channels change the channels with these. There was also a knob here to control the fine tuning. And as you can see, there's nothing there. What? Apparently, uh, it must have got stepped on and broke off. And where it is, who knows? I've looked all over and it may have gotten vacuumed. It may have gotten thrown out but it is missing. And it had a little metal shaft that was soldered onto this end. And you would just turn the uh, fine tuning on there. You messed up big, mister. And since it's completely gone, I don't even have a knob that matches these. So either I'm gonna have to order a knob or come up with something so I can use the fine tuning on here. Ain't that the pits? I'll tell you. It was probably me stepped on it, but I don't know. Maybe Peanut took it, bit it off. Maybe that Dickel, that rascal Dickel took it, and he's gonna hold it for hostage for a bottle of whiskey or something. And I found this uh, TV on Craigslist and uh, I bought the set for, believe it or not, 39 bucks. Wow! And something I haven't shown you yet is uh, what came with it here. What is it? I'll show you right now. Ah! Came with a magnifying glass that you're supposed to hook it up uh, in the front there and it's supposed to magnify your 7 inch screen so it looks bigger. The bigger, the better. I don't know how much it's supposed to magnify it. Uh, as you can see there, it doesn't magnify it too much, but... Damn, you're ugly. We'll get to see that uh, a little later and see uh, what a difference it makes on the screen. Originally, I don't know if this was sold with the set or these were aftermarket type things you could buy. I think it adds a little bit more to it, don't you think? You see that sign? I got that on eBay and it was eight bucks. And I ordered two. And I sent one to Old 64 Goat. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? That's a reproduction. As you can see here, it looks like it's uh, rusty here, but that's just uh, taken from the original. Anyway, me and Old 64 Goat have matching signs. Pretty damn neat, huh? I think so. Yes.
Welcome, everybody. Here we are with another edition of Experimenting with Buzz. Now, you're looking at some stuff called polyplastics, and you can use this stuff to make molds. Since I haven't had any luck finding a knob, I decided to make one. Now, I've never attempted this before. So we're gonna see how it goes. This stuff comes with the mold portion. It's uh, silicone mold putty. Comes in parts A and B. You mix those together. And then you put the part you wanna mold inside that, let it harden. And after it hardens, you take it out. Then you use this uh, plastic pellets, put the stuff in boiling water till it gets soft, then you shove it into the mold, and within a few minutes, you should have a knob. Now this stuff comes with some coloring, but I don't have that. I'm just gonna use this white, and if it turns out okay, I'm just gonna paint the thing. So does that sound kinda interesting? Well, let's try it, huh? So I need equal parts of A and B. So let's just open it up. Take a tablespoon. Wonderful, wonderful. Don't think I need too much. I think that's good. Hey man, this stuff is boring, man. Oops, hold on. I need this in. I've never seen anything like, nothing ever like this. <laughs> Feels kind of oily in my hands, very soft. Looks like I made too much. You got about three or four minutes Playtime of this. Please hurry up. I'm going to take the uh, knob. Way too much. I want to leave the uh, this top part open. And get rid of some of this. Mister, you better find yourself another line of work. Well, it's been 30 minutes. Let's take a look at it. It's a little spongy when you squeeze it, but it's hard. Let's see if I can trim uh, some of it off here. Yeah, now I gotta get that out of there. <laughs> I don't think I got it quite all the way. Looks like there's a, uh, there's a gap in here. So it looks like I'm gonna have to do it again, but 
Let me put the plastic pellets in there and see what we get. Okay, I got a pan of boiling water there. Let's just pour some of this in here. I don't be stingy, baby. This stuff is uh, reusable, so when it gets hard, <coughs> you can just stick it in the uh, boiling water again and you can reuse it. This is pathetic, man. It gets clear when, uh, when it gets ready to use. I wish this was more of a liquid type of thing. He's like taffy. Okay, we'll try that. Let that cool a little bit and we'll pull it out of there. Don't go away. Okay, I think that's enough time. Let's just pull it out of there and see what we get. <laughs> you see how I didn't quite take there on the bottom? I left some gap down in there in the middle. Gonna have to redo it, but uh, this part looks pretty good. Oh, brother. Feel the ridges on it. Let me do it again. I won't show the mold part, but uh, I'll show when I put the uh, plastic pellets back in there. So let me get that done. Okay, I made another mold. This time I used uh, the saucer here to make it flat on the bottom here. So let's take this off. Right, and remember to make it look good. Looks okay there. Okay, let's do another one. This time I'm going to heat up the mold portion to get it kind of warm so the, uh, the pellets go in there better. Buzz, you have to use your brain. You know, that's the small thing that resides inside your big bonehead. Nobody said the job was going to be easy. Okay, let's take a look at it and see what we got. That's rubbish! That looks pretty good. Let's get a close shot of that. Well, look at that. Ooh, don't that pretty. <laughs> that is a pretty line. Ooh, yeah! <laughs> okay, let's paint it. You know what the real bitch of it is? It's paint by number. Well, there's two knobs there. Can you tell which one is the real one and which is the one I made? Is it this one or this one? You gotta be kidding me. With a fake knob, please step forward. Well, there you go. That's the one I made. It turned out pretty good, I think. Originally it had something similar to this and it was soldered just like it is now and I lost that so I made this and uh, soldered it on here
And I was thinking here, instead of taking the uh, the one I made, because this has to be drilled out and stuff, I decided I'll use this uh, for one of the channels. And I'll take uh, the original knob, which has got the two slots in there, and I'm going to use that. Like that. Not bad. I want to take the sticker out and uh, take a look at it, see if it's in good shape. Looks okay from this side. He said he was going to do it and he's doing it now. Wow. Excellent. This looks in really good shape. Looks like we got a spider web on it. Up. Well, it's about time to put this thing back into its cabinet. I'm gonna have to clean it. This is uh, looks like it's very dirty here. Well, there it is cleaned. I put a little wax on it. It's got a little bit of a shine to it, so it's a lot better than it was. Here's a look at the chassis before I stick it inside the cabinet. I didn't clean it or anything. Oh, brother. Uh, I didn't feel like it. Oh, brother. It's going to be inside anyway. Nobody's going to see it, so what the hell. You jerk! I put the top on the uh, high voltage cage there. I labeled all the tubes. And uh, what they are on everything just for the next poor sucker who gets this this is the plug where the power comes in at and I don't like the looks of this wire here I think I'll rewire this but before I do that let's plug it in and test it one more time and see what it looks like Looks pretty good. Okay, here's the knob that I made. I put a little slot in here. And I was thinking I should put it on channel 3 since this one receives on channel 3 and the uh, the knob is recessed. Here's a sticker that's uh, glued in the inside of the cabinet. Where's the tubes? Where's the tubes? Okay, it's time to put the mask on. That looks pretty good. Just got to put the top on it. And we should be almost finished. Then we can have the grand reveal. Oh boy. Okay, the time has come for the reveal. So this has been more of a repair than a restore. I didn't touch the cabinet. It still needs painting and stuff, but I'm going to leave that to somebody else. So, here is the 1948 Holocrafters. Repaired. Take it away, Buzz. Ha, 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 ha.
Works pretty good. I thought I'd give a demonstration on this magnifying glass I've got. So let's stick it in here. Let's see what we get. There's without it. Doesn't magnify much, but it does a little bit. Is that Chester hitting on Kitty? Wow. Well, this lady. Oh, boy, I, well, I always think of you as a lady, Miss Kitty. I mean, you, you know, I mean, I never think hey, about it. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, that rascal old Chester. So that's the demonstration of the magnifying glass. Don't act like you're not impressed. Bad. It must be handled this way, but it must. Let's see what else I can get on this TV. How can I get the wrong one? I remember this episode of The Twilight Zone. Maybe you need... Plan. Young Buzz was about 11 years old when he first saw this, and this episode scared me pretty damn good. Why don't you take the eye test? Now, what am I holding out in front of me? I'll give you a hand. It's between D and F. Don't peek. Don't peek. What do you say, partner? What do you say? What do you say? We get down to business. I wonder if that dummy is related to Dickel. How can you be real when you made a what? <laughs> you made me real. You poured words into my head. You move my mouth, you stuck up my tongue, you jerk. Don't you get it? You made me what I am today. I hope you're satisfied from the song of the same name. I thought the ending of this was really creepy. And now, direct from New York City, the funniest pair of cuckoos you'll ever see, here in Kansas City or any place else, Jerry and Willie. Let's bring them out, big folks. And come out. How do you do, folks? How do you do? A funny thing happened to me on the way over to the club tonight. I met this broad. Uh, oh, now, Jerry, you don't mean broad. You mean lady. Oh, look, chum, you just write the jokes and I'll tell them, okay? <laughs> well, anyway, I met this broad coming down the street. Uh, it was a broad street. <laughs> What's known in the parlance of the times is the old and, switcher uh, room. We From boss together. to blockhead and a few uneasy lessons. And if you're given to nightclubbing on occasion, check this act. It's called Willie and Jerry. And they generally are booked into some of the clubs along the gray night way, known as the Twilight Zone. Do you think all that could happen to old Buzz? 
I sure as hell don't want to turn into Dicko. Yikes! What? Oh my god! Well, that concludes my five-part series of this 1948 Helicrafters. For anybody out there, this TV is for sale if the price is right. So, until next time, this is Buzz1151 signing off. Stay tuned for Dickel's Corner, coming right up. Adios, amigos. Hello, folks. Dickel Laugh Lockett here. Welcome to Dickel's Corner. Tonight, in his own words, our beloved old 64 goat explains the origins of how and why he became old 64 goat. Tell us, goat, how did it all start? Maybe some of you have wondered why I'm called an old goat, why my channel is called old 64 goat. Well, there's a reason why I'm called an old goat, and it's not by my choosing. Well, I don't like changes. I don't like the modern way of things being done most of the time. I'm basically just an old fart, and I've been called that by my cousin and other people. So, in the beginning, I didn't really like it. It hurt my feelings, but you know what? I kind of like rolled with the punches, so to speak, and uh, it's really all, not all that bad. Being uh, called an old goat or an old fart or anything, uh, it has its advantages, I guess. A good example of, uh, of being an old fart is, um, first of all, I don't like dancing. Uh, when I met my wife, she uh, liked to dance, and I didn't, and uh, I always felt, <laughs> and she got mad at me saying this, the people that jump around and dance aren't make fools of themselves, but uh, to this day, she uh, holds me, you know, holds that against me. I like to sit and listen to the band and listen to the music. I don't like to get up there and go. <laughs> Don't do those things because I'm an old fart, and old farts don't do that. This goes back uh, quite a few years. Uh, whenever we used to go to uh, a fair or a carnival or something in my younger days, I never wanted to go on the rides or anything, uh, mainly because I get sick on a lot of the rides. I still do to this day. Um, the only rides I'll go on <laughs> is the merry-go-round and the Ferris wheel. My cousins would say, yeah, you're an old fart, you're an old goat, and I'll, come on, get some, have some fun, do something, you know? So, um, you know, all these things add up, you know, this guy doesn't want to do anything, you know? He, all he wants to do is just be an old fart, an old goat. I am an old goat, and why not name my channel Old Goat? And at that time, I was 64 years old, so therefore, it's old 64 goat. Thank you, Bill Goat. Now we know. The rest of the story. This is Dick F. Lockett reporting. Good night. I hope you like my story. Did you know that your head contains 22 bones? No wonder some people are called boneheads. It's no fun getting old. Is that old goat still creaking around? Why didn't somebody bury him?